Welcome to Whiskey Nightcaps, the channel where we do sit before sleep, and I am your host, Jace Davis. Every day, all day, baby. And today, we're gonna be muscling through some whiskey, and I pulled out some budget options uh, to burn through, you know, and see what we like here. Now, before we get into this thing, if you're new here, welcome, first of all. Welcome into the fold, you know, it's a cult-like following. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can get these videos and hit the like button so everybody else knows that they should be watching this video. All right, so we're gonna do two separate verses. We're doing a verses like Swiss Beats and, and, and Timberland, but the whiskey version, but we're gonna do in two rounds, or, or really maybe about four rounds, Wild Turkey 101 versus Evan Williams Bottled and Bond, and then we have Broken Barrel or Infused Spirits uh, bourbon, and we also have the Small Batch bourbon that they have available as well. You know, I felt like these were good pairings. This bottle, uh, the Small Batch, bro the Small Batch Broken Barrel, I just purchased yesterday as a matter of fact. So this is brand new, spanking new uh, in my bar. And this other one I've, I've had for quite a while. Um, you can see how low it is. Cindy's it's like, looks like it needs to be shaken up a little bit. I don't know what that is floating around in there, but I'm sure it won't kill me. All right, so we're not messing around, man. Let's go ahead and get into this thing. This is a not so blind. I don't have anybody here with me at this point to pour this stuff for me so that I won't know which whiskey it is. So we're just gonna have to deal with my biases today. All right, we're gonna start with the 101 versus the B&B, &B, okay? The Evan Williams B&B &B and see what we have here. It smells banging in here, by the way, with all these whiskeys on the table. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a collection of all of them together in the air or if that's one in particular to stand it out, but it smells great. Almost like when I first brought this barrel in here and it started to leak on the floor. That was, that was awesome. All right, so let's start with this Wild Turkey 101, which we know is a fan favorite, not just of myself, but everybody. Name me someone that doesn't like Wild Turkey 101. Straight up. Tomorrow they'll be missing. All right, let's go to the nose on this thing. Now you get that beautiful caramel right up top. You know, that's the sweetness of the corn. Followed by the rye. Classic bourbon flavors. I mean, and, and that's why it's so loved. You know, you got that vanilla extract wafting across the top as well. A little bit of orange rind. Yeah. You can't beat that. Well, the only thing that can beat the smell of it is what's about to happen, which is it going down the gullet. Let's go. You know, you get that sweetness up front. It's followed by a rush of that spice. And it is warm going down. What do they say, Kentucky hug? Is that what they say? This is like a bear hug. Later on the finish, you start to get some of that sweetness. Some of that like pound cake type of flavor is coming like back up across the top. That is good stuff, quality stuff. We know the bottle doesn't cost that much. You know, around here it's about $23. A solid, solid, solid pick for any bar. If you don't have one, you, you need to at least have one bottle of 101 somewhere, stand. All right, let's see what this up, let's see what's up with this Evan Williams. Definitely a lot softer on the nose. It's very muted. Very soft, which allows me to get closer in, you know, and it's crazy that, you know, this is a bottled and bomb, which means it's, you know, it's 50%, so it's only 1% less than the wild turkey. But 
it's just not jumping out of the glass like the 101. You know, there's some baking spice there. Very soft toffee notes. Like you really have to get in here to try to discern what it is that, you know, is the makeup of the nose here. There's oak. I like oak. Not mad at the oak. And then a little bit of that bourbon vanilla. Very faint though, very, very faint um, on the back end. Yeah, the most predominant note here is the baking spice. Like I said, you really have to get in here to pick that up. All right, let's see what it tastes like. Oaky. Kind of reminds me of uh, Jim Beam. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like the Jim Beam um, single barrel. There's some cinnamon. I'm gonna layer it with a little bit of vanilla syrup, or vanilla extract, but not heavy. You know, the cinnamon is probably the most pronounced note on the palate. Not bad, I mean, it tastes like your average bourbon. I mean, this bottle I think was $17. You know, so a, a B and B for 17 is is really not that bad. We know that's a, a minimum at least of four years. 50% ABV. What more are you looking for? You know, if we're talking in terms of budget whiskey, and even though I'll be honest with you guys, I'll be straightforward. I am making a pact with myself after a recent experience. I'm gonna stop experimenting with budget whiskey, seriously. You know, versus having like four budget whiskey bottles that you don't like, you can have one premium whiskey that will be knocking your socks off, you know? So I, you know, maybe for the purpose of doing videos, but just for myself, I'm really not, I'm really not into it anymore. You know, this is leaving like a taste, like an aftertaste. Um, not too, kosher with that. Might come from me rambling though. Not bad, like I said, 17 bucks. What are you gonna do? You know, let's let it sit for a second. We'll come back, we do round two. But while we're doing that, we're gonna move over to our next duo. Uh, yeah, it was just super confusing because they both say broken barrel and infused spirits, but like in different spots of the bottle. Like in one that's more pronounced, it says, you know, infused spirits. This one says broken, but then it says broken barrel at the bottom. I don't know. This one actually gives you the mash bill on the bottle, which is 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley. And it gives you the oak bill. So basically it's telling you what type of wood was used uh, to flavor this whiskey, which is 40% ex bourbon barrels, 40% new French oak, 20% sherry cask oak. And the reason why they call it broken barrels is because they actually take barrels apart, break up the staves, and put it in the whiskey to impart that flavor. Now this one doesn't have the breakdown, but it does say that it's French oak, ex-bourbon cask, and Oloroso sherry. This is batch 007. Check that out, 007. It says every batch of infused spirits, broken barrel. Bourbon is aged in charred American oak barrels and infused with French oak, Oloroso sherry, and ex-bourbon cask until balanced and smooth. All right, so let's start with this one, which is the infused spirits. Has a funky kind of smell to it, I, you know. I think that is the, uh, the sherry that's coming through. but you can pick up the bourbon behind it. But I'm definitely picking up that sherry note, so it, it, it you're getting like uh, that raisin type of smell. Then a little bit of the spice from the bourbon, but definitely a heavy, you know, reddish purple fruit note. Let's see how it tastes. Cause I actually haven't had this in probably about a year. It's just been sitting here. 
You know, it's really soft on the tongue. Not a lot of bite. It's what you would call a smooth whiskey. Again, classic bourbon flavors. There was a little bit of the sherry that, that was starting to come through on the back end, but it, you know, as it continues to roll, it's more of like the, the rye spice that's coming out that I'm, I'm picking up here. And you know, I, I don't know if a lot of this comes from oxidation as well. You know, this isn't giving me what I used to pick up, which was more of like a, uh, what we call a French apple pie. All right, so let's go to the broken barrel. This is the small batch. The one is 70% corn. That's interesting. What is that? It's got like a candy corn nose. Like a bag, that Halloween candy corn. Like that is what I'm picking up. There's nothing else on the nose but that. All right, let's see how it is on the tongue. Now some of that did translate to the palate. For sure, that candy corn, definitely picking that up. But there's also a, on the finish, like a rubbing alcohol kind of taste, which says to me that this whiskey is probably young. There's no substitute for age when it comes to whiskey, and people try to get around it on several occasions, right, by speeding up the maturation process with smaller barrels or whatever was so heavy, but there's just no substitute for good old fashioned age. And I know for some people that's hard to do because, you know, as this whiskey sitting in the barrel, it's, it's not making any money. You know, it's, it's just sitting there probably getting taxed. And so they want to speed up that process, get it on the shelf, get these dollars back. All right, let's go back to the first verses, which was the one-on-one versus the bottom bond. I'm gonna go backwards, start with the bottom bond, go to the 101, final assessment. If you get close enough, you get some ethanol burn, but you really have to get in there. Still getting that toffee, vanilla. Like I said, in spite, it's, it's, it's bourbon. Classic bourbon notes, okay? Let's get rid of it. got that dry, that dry spice. Some people will love that, you know, because it's not as sweet as a whiskey that has like a really, really, really high corn percentage. It has an aftertaste though. It, it definitely has an aftertaste that I don't particularly care for too much, but let's hold off, let's hold off. Let's give this one-on-one a chance and see if it's, quality and the nose on this thing is crazy like i you know this whiskey never ceases to amaze me and i'm always so uh just just thrown off by the fact that it's only like 23 bucks like they must have like a ton of whiskey in storage where they're just trying to get rid of this stuff right because you could easily sell this probably for about 40 dollars for sure but let's see what we got here Now, I'm not even gonna BS yet, right? We ain't even gonna stretch it out. Between these two, the Wild Turkey 101 definitely is the winner. The quality of it is just, like, there's no comparison when it, it, it comes to this Evan Williams. You know, the Evan Williams, like I said, is $17, so I didn't expect a whole lot. Maybe it, it costs more in your market, but here's 17 bucks. Didn't expect a whole lot. You can use it as a mixer or something like that. Um, or if you were trying to stretch out some of your more premium whiskeys and you know keep those bottles full, you could drink on this to leave those bottles alone. However, is this something I'm gonna purchase again? Probably not. All right, let's go to this artisan crafted spirit. That's what it actually says on the bottle. <clears throat> and I'm not getting toasty at this point lying. All right, let's go. We're doing reverse order, right? So we're going to start with the broken barrel and then go to the infused spirits broken barrel. 
I don't know. Still heavy with the candied corn. There's a little bit of wood there. There's definitely some wood. It's, it's, it's not oak that I'm picking up though. What is that? And a stringent nail polish remover. Let's go. Now, like I said, when it first hits your, your tongue, you're like, this is an interesting whiskey. It has a different taste to it. Pretty decent. As the finish comes about, you know, you're like, okay, if, if my child scraped their knee, I could put this on a uh, cotton ball. Now, this bottle cost me 26 bucks. It was 26 pre-tax. So, not like I lost a whole lot of money. However, Oh, let me let me let me hold off on what I'm about to say there before I finish this one. Let's see what we have here. Definitely, like I said, getting those fruits on the nose. This time, there's like a, a there's an added fruit. There's like a pear mixed in with it. A pear and the raisin. Slight spice, not really heavy. More like a nutmeg and versus the cinnamon. I mean, it smells pleasant, very soft, cool. Let's see what it does on the palate. There's no bite, no bite to this. But again, there's the caveat that I have had this bottle for quite a while, and it's possible it's been softened due to oxidation. I mean, I don't recall in the past it really having a bite, but you never know. I'm getting this sherry on the back end. It's not classic bourbon for sure. Like, it is different. It's totally different. Like, these and these are in two separate leagues, totally. You know, but that is intentional they were intentionally trying to bring some variety to bourbon. I mean, you have these French oak staves, which, you know, it's not a bourbon thing. And, I, and now I'm thinking about it as I'm talking out loud. How can you call this bourbon? I mean, it says bourbon whiskey. The wild turkey says the same thing, but I'm just trying to figure out how you can call this bourbon. Um, maybe they should call it bourbon, finished bourbon or something like that because you know, with, the, with them adding in, uh, you know, these oak staves, these broken oak staves from Oloroso Sherry Cask and French Oak, French oak Cask, which I, I believe is associated more so along the lines of cognac. It's technically not bourbon, um, but I have to go with the infused spirit, not the broken barrel, even though this one also says broken barrel on the bottom. I'm really trying to figure out what the difference is between these two whiskeys. Like the, the labels are almost identical. They both say made with broken oak stays right at the top. And this one says broken barrel. This one says infused spirits. They both say small batch. This one says small batch bourbon. This one says small batch whiskey, but then at the bottom says bourbon whiskey. I don't know. Both 47.5%. This is weird. Totally weird. Totes, totes weird. And I don't know if I feel like doing the investigation because I don't like the whiskey that much. All right, so have you had any of these whiskeys that lay before you? And what do you think? Okay. Now, I can say this because I have a small channel and um, I don't have, you know, it, I, I'm not as big as other people are and I'm not getting whiskeys from people, but I, I can tell you that I probably wouldn't mess with these at all. They have some other whiskeys, maybe try those, but I would not even, like, I just, let me, let me just block you from being able to see these. I wouldn't even waste my money on these. I would just move on to something else. Okay, for your buck, you can get better whiskey. All right, so man, so come back here on Wednesday. We'll be around at some point. Whiskey Nightcaps out.